Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369. 0703 768119. I'm going to be working on section D of our Bible study outline. So I want you all to bring out your study outline. It will be on page 15. And we'll be looking at engaging the power of the Holy Spirit. Engaging the power of the Holy Spirit in making disciples. We might not follow the outline itself completely as it is quite elaborate, but there are issues that we are going to build upon and trusting that God will give us clear wisdom on how to respond to the move of the Spirit. Engaging the power of the Holy Spirit. The first question I wanted to deal with, what do we do from now? What do we do from now? How will this that has happened to us in this meeting, how will it not end as if it is a mere wind? How will it become an outburst that God is speaking about? So before I will take all the examples of those who came under the power of the Holy Spirit and engaged him that brought about an outburst and a mighty revival. I would like to first establish that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that God grants from one generation to another, from one person to another, God does not create a, a barrier or a limit to how far the Spirit can move. Actually, when men ever stopped the move of the Spirit, is because they chose to stop it, not because the Lord stops it. So I want to first note that fire never says it is enough. The coming of the Holy Spirit on our lives has capacity to overrun the entire earth if we don't say it is enough. So permit me to look at very quick issues about engaging the power of the Holy Spirit for it to become an outburst, for it to become a flow, both in your life as an individual and in our lives as a corporate people who have been seeking for an outburst in revival. 
what are the things that we must never omit so that we don't stop what God has started in our lives these days. There is no doubt that the comforter has come. But what do we do from here henceforth in order to maximize and engage him for what God is sending him into our lives to do? I will want to begin by looking at how Jesus engaged the Holy Ghost. Then I will want to look at how the apostles engaged the Holy Spirit. And if it were not for time, I found that I would have loved to see how Elisha engaged the Holy Spirit. I would have loved to see how Moses engaged the anointing that came on their lives. If there was time, I would like to look at the, the process by which those that have been so anointed, even if it happened in a private corner, like it is happening here, even if it happens in a small village, as it has happened to some of us before, how do we engage it so that the fullness of its manifestation will not be cut short? So let's do that. And at every point when I come to uh, how to engage him in making disciples, I will be asking you to refer to this again and again. Let's look at Jesus. In Matthew chapter 3, you will see that in your, in your Bible study outline, we're looking at Jesus, that he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. But there are a few things I want to quickly highlight as we turn to the scripture. Will you read Matthew chapter 3? This was Jesus' own experience of the outpouring of the Spirit of God on his own life. And how that did not end by the riverside of Jordan. How it broke forth and how it became what it became with him and then with us all together. Matthew chapter 3. I will have been saying somebody should read for us but because I am conscious of time uh, I will be reading but if somebody is positioned around the mic here you might be assisting us from time to time. We're reading Matthew 3. Then cometh Jesus from verse 13, I read 13, from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, he went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, I want to take it also from Luke 4. Matthew 3 that we have read, keep it. There are a few issues there. But let's go to Luke 4. Verse 1, verse 14, 
verse 18 to 22. Luke chapter 4. Luke 4. Are you in Luke 4? Right. Please be doing quick because we are doing a Bible study and at the same time we need to gain instructions on how to go on from here. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. Go to verse 18. Verse 18. Let me read 17 before 18. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Let me stop there. What is peculiar about these passages that we have read thus far? The first point, which I don't want to belabor, was that Jesus sought the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Even though Jesus was actually born by the outworking of the Spirit, God said concerning his birth, that the Spirit of God will come over you, was telling Mary, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And that thing that will be born of you shall be, shall be born of the Spirit, and it shall be called the Son of God. So, by birth, Jesus actually was born of the Spirit. And he knew no sin. He was not born of flesh like we were. But you see, being born of the Spirit, which for us now is our own second birth. Hallelujah. Jesus did not need a second birth because he was never born in the flesh before. He was born by the Spirit. But he was going to carry the new, the, the spiritual life, but in the flesh, in the human body. But you would have thought that if somebody had been born by the Spirit, does he need another outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Jesus said it was needed. He said it was necessary. So he had to go. He had to travel. He left where he was living and he went to Jordan. And at Jordan, according to Luke, he was praying. As he was being baptized in water, he was praying. What was he praying for? He was praying that the heavens might be opened unto him that the spirit of God might descend upon his life so the first point is that he sought it he sought the outpouring he sought the baptism he did not take it for granted and also we 
will not take it for granted. So our seeking, our praying, our asking for the Spirit of God upon our lives, even though we were born again, is not out of point. He did it. But there are two issues that I wish to quickly note how he engaged the Spirit. In that Matthew 13, I mean chapter 3, there was a little phrase that I want you to note. All of you, please. Are you there? Matthew 3, verse 16. The Bible said, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open to him. Now, verse the next night say, and he saw, he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. He saw it. Which means he knew that what he came to Jordan to collect, he has collected it. Hallelujah. The first point I'm noting there is he who is in honor and does not know it. What did the Bible say? He is like a brute beast. The first point in engaging the Holy Ghost is to know that he has come. The first step in engaging the power of the Holy Spirit is to recognize that he is here. And the Bible noted that Jesus saw. He saw the Spirit descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And the voice that spoke from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well placed. Jesus saw that. And because he saw it, he knew immediately that he had been anointed for a purpose. He knew that the man that left Nazareth to come to Jordan is not the same man that is going back home. Are we together? It was clear to him that the way I came is not the way I am returning. Something has done what? Had descended on me like a dove. This is very important that as the Spirit of God descends on your life, you must know it and live in the conscious reality of it. Don't go back home as if the Spirit of God had not come. The first mistake that we could make is to think that we have just had these good meetings and that we have had great prayers and that the Spirit was moving and that it has ended here. No. To engage the Holy Spirit, you need to know that what God brought on your life in this meeting was deliberate. And that God didn't do it casually. And that what God has done now, there is going to be a result, an outburst, a reaction that will arise because of what has happened to you during this period. Am I communicating with you now? Now I will go a bit to explain what that will mean. So because 
he was aware now that the spirit has descended on him as a dove. Chapter 4, verse 1 that we didn't read here but we read in Luke, said he was led of the spirit. He began to defy to the Holy Ghost. He began now to know that the spirit has come. I can no longer go the way I like to go. I'm going to be now asking, Holy Spirit, you are now here. What will you have me do? Where do you want me to go? So when they said he was led of the spirit into the wilderness, other version would say he was driven of the spirit into the wilderness. But I prefer the word, it was what? It was led. That means that he did not discountenance the spirit that has come upon him. And for you not to waste what God has poured upon you, you must live in the conscious understanding of the outpouring that has come. Am I, do you hear me now? Which means, the way you came to Boko is not the way you are going back. What you were doing before you came to Boko is not the same thing you are going to go and do when you return back. And when they say, why? You said the comforter has come. Maybe your wife did not follow you here. But you recognize that the spirit fell on me in a different dimension. I've been speaking in tongues before, but during this meeting, something else, an outpouring came on my life. And you are not going to return home and say, well, I the meeting, say, fine, we thank God, let's continue what we are doing. No. When you do like that, it's like God has given you something and you don't recognize it. So the first thing is to submit now to the deliberate leading of the Spirit so that His coming into your life could be maximized. Now, do you permit me to tell you my own personal testimony? Can I tell you a testimony? Because I feel that what we are saying, we need to be as practical with it as we can. Now, I have been baptized in the Holy Spirit some years. And when that happened in my room, the excitement of it was so overwhelming that I knew that, yes, the Spirit had come. But you see, the only thing that we were excited about then was that we spoke in tongues. But because I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, Jesus said, when you come, you will teach me all things. Now that you have come. I don't know who taught me that, but I simply say, now that you have come. Jesus said, when you come, you will teach me all things. And as I was asking, the Holy Spirit said, yes, I have come. So I just decided... I opened scripture. I opened, I remember, I opened 1 Corinthians 13 to the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, what do you mean when you said, do I speak in tongues of men and of angels? I just read those scriptures. I said, what do you mean to my surprise to my surprise, the Holy Spirit did not take my question as that of a foolish boy. The Holy Spirit took me up home and for another four hours, he was explaining 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, 2, and 3 for the next four hours. I have never seen that before. So from that day, I knew now that I have a resident teacher 
that is now with me permanent. So I normally will open by one and say, Holy Ghost, what do you mean when you wrote this? One thing I saw was that that coming of the Holy Spirit that time turned something about me because he doesn't come for nothing. You have not received the Holy Spirit in this meeting for nothing. Something will break out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to become another man. But you need to first recognize that he is now here. One of the things that really, really changed my life was that I kept saying, now that you are now here. When I wanted to pray, I remember say, Holy Spirit, now that you are here, Jesus said, I don't know how to pray, but when you come, with groanings that cannot be uttered, can you help me pray? I was surprised that actually I'm dealing with a personality who is actually there. If you don't recognize him, you may never engage him. Did you hear me now? So what's the first thing we must do as we are going from here now? We must recognize that he is here. We must acknowledge him. In all your ways, do what? Acknowledge that he is here. When we want to now raise a song, you don't raise a song as you used to raise it before. Because you used to sing before he came. Now that he is here, you are going to be asking, Holy Spirit, how do you want this meeting to run? But the more exciting story I want to share with you was that we went to a village and in this village, we were to do a, a crusade, you know, in a small village. And I was the leader of the team. And I went with students from the university. And as we were to start, I've been fasting before the meeting. Because we just said, let's just pray that God will move in that place. So as we were entering the village, the Holy Spirit said, you thought you came for a crusade. You have come for me and I'm going to engage you here. Do you know that we just wanted to kneel down to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for joining messes. Oh, Lord, we have come. We want to start the crusade so that we can set the brothers who will set equipment and all of that. My God, we knelt down to just worship Nobody could stop the worship until 10 p.m. We asked our president of fellowship to come and preach in the crusade. He got annoyed. He said, what is all this? We are to do crusade. We are not here for praise worship. But we couldn't stop. I was being polite to my president to go and say, okay, okay, I'm going to move the bread right now. By the time I got there, I wanted to say, Brethren, let's talk, we're going for a crusade. One sister just started prophesying, Belay, don't tamper with my work. <laughs> you are here to dismiss my people from my presence? What right have you to do that? I have not told anybody that I'm going to dismiss anybody. I was just going to take the microphone and say, in the name of Jesus, like we used to do when you are conducting fellowship. And then that sister just spoke and called me by my name. Wow. Fear gripped me. I couldn't stop. That's how that, my wife, you were there. That's how that meeting continued till 5 a.m. Nobody could stop. At 5 a.m., I thought that by this time, at least people should go and sleep. As I was standing up to say, let us just bring this meeting to a conclusion, 
another prophecy stood up there. And the Holy Spirit said, allow my people to worship me and to praise me. That's how we continue in that praise till 10 a.m. You have not seen the kind of thing I'm talking to you about. You will see greater things than this in the name of Jesus. You see, I have seen a little of when the Holy Spirit takes over. Do you know that we were in worship when the Spirit said, well, send some people to go from village to village to go and preach. Let the rest of you continue to pray and to worship. So we sent some people two by two. The rest of us were just worshiping and praying. We have no broken. No breakfast. Nobody had time to go and take baths. Do you remember that you went to Olokoboro? Some people went to another village. While they were in this village, a woman was dead and they were carrying this corpse out. The whole villagers were crying. When some of our brothers got there, these are ordinary students too. They just saw a dead woman that everybody was crying about. And one of them said, let's pray now. And they went near the corpse. And this brother just lay hands on the dead baby man, a woman. Lo and behold, the thing started shaking. <laughs> and the woman rose up. That's how the whole of those village gathered. We were planning to do crusade, uh, putting all this uh, something, and then someone said, "Come and see Jesus! Come and see Jesus!" <laughs> Those useless things we were planning to do. God bypassed us. So right in the village there, news was spreading abroad everywhere. But you know, as they were coming back to give report of what God did, the rest of us were still in worship since, since, since yesterday. So they only joined us. The worship continued the second night. Nobody could stop. Nobody. We couldn't stop until the third day now. The third day now is Sunday. Where brethren went and God had moved, the people said, say, you have to come and pray to us in our Sunday. You have to. So we distributed people they were going. The rest of us remained. By the time people came back at about 2 p.m., I got so concerned that now these people have been here three days. They have not eaten. They have not been sleeping and they have an exam the following Monday. Let's dismiss this meeting now. So I just jumped on our bike. I was going to the next village to go and arrange a gongoro that will carry the bread. I paid. Oh my God. I will never forget what God did to me that day. I paid. I was coming with gongoro to pack the bread. I thought I was being a good man of God. So, as the gongoro landed, and I was announcing to the brethren, now get ready, pack your load, you are going back to the campus now. I didn't know what drove me to the small classroom where some few brethren were praying. There was continuous unceasing prayer. We don't know the spirit of prayer that fell on us. As I was kneeling down in their midst, the spirit said, you like this. I wanted to trust you with my power. See what you are doing. See now. You went and brought Gongoro to pack my children for my presence. Is that how to be led by the Holy Ghost? I thought I would use you, but now you are finishing your life. Ah! I don't know what carried me from my knees and knocked me on the ground. Wow! I've never seen conviction like that before. As I started wailing and crying as if I lost a baby, all the people that were in the room where they were praying, they all started weeping. Then all the people that were agitating that they were traveling, 
Nobody went again. They said, what happened? They said, Bragile has been struck. God has struck him. God has struck him. And as they were saying, God has struck him, others were just praying. Others were weeping. Before I know it, over 200 students began to weep. That day, it started raining. We didn't expect it to rain. It started raining. People were begging me to come out of the rain. I thought that let this rain hit my head very well. If God, maybe God has sent this rain to really discipline this uh, stubborn boy that, that I was. I was there so I was just begging God, begging God, begging God, begging God. That prayer, that weeping, continued to 2 a.m. now Monday morning. But now this thing, during that period, the Holy Spirit came down. People were falling into trance. The Holy Ghost was touching people. Sometimes the Spirit would just go and, and touch somebody's tongue and it would break out and begin to sing special songs that we never know where it is coming from. Things were happening. So I went and knelt in the corner and said, Lord, have you finished with me? Have you finished with me? Oh God, have you finished with me? God said, the time of ignorance, God winked at. Because this is your first time of misbehaving, I will forgive you. But when I decide to trust you, I abhor betrayer of trust. He says some certain things that moment which I began to write. And I knew that from that point, I have been set aside for a special assignment in the body of Christ. I knew. So the following morning, you know, we left by 2 a.m. We got to our campus around 3 a.m. By 6 a.m., I was back at the chapel of resurrection in one corner. I said, Lord, I am here. What you said yesterday, I am here now. Imagine I have only slept for two hours old. I was now kneeling down. And God said, yes. I told you I will be giving you mysteries that you have never read from anywhere. You have not had anybody preach before. Because... There is a critical need for you in my church. So as I knelt down there, I was just trying to ask, what you say yesterday, I'm here. For the next, from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. I couldn't explain to you John 3, 16, I wrote and wrote as if the Spirit was standing by me and dictating. From 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., you will ask, what of my lectures? Suspended. I couldn't go for lecture. The comforter has come. From that point, when we gather a little meeting of uh, the young, the brothers, that sister that went to uh, village evangelism, just to say, let's just, let just share a little exhortation. The word of God will come out. And without us telling anybody, people started sneaking to our meetings. And our meetings was becoming bigger than the main meeting of the fellowship. And my president was annoyed. He said, you are starting another ministry on this campus. I said, no, I'm not. He said, we canceled that meeting. They canceled it. They were going to quench the Holy Ghost. I don't know what will have happened with what God started doing. Because people will come from town just to attend the village evangelism fellowship. Those that were sick, they are coming all the way from town. We are not doing any special prayer. Once they sit in our midst and we were singing, they got healed. They got healed. Something began to happen. Now, 
the effect of that little visitation in that village has not waned for 35 years. It has carried us onto different things that we have done thus far. But I hear God saying, I have come again. I have come again. If a visitation in a small village, when we did not even know how to walk with God, produce something that thousands of people have been affected already, how much more what God promised to do now? Not among 20 people, not among 200 people, but look at us in thousands you will see the glory of God. Yeah. But the first thing to do, you must engage him by recognizing that he has come. If you go back as if he has not come, you have quenched him. You will not allow him to do what he wanted to do. Praise the Lord. Now, how did Jesus, not only that he began now to defer to the leading of the spirit in that look for I want you to see what he did he came back to the church as he used to be he attended the church service the synagogue as his manner was but don't forget that verse 14 already said Jesus returned in the power of the spirit do you remember that what does that mean it means that as he was coming there is power what did i say there is the power of the spirit resident in his life now when he went when he took the journey to jordan it was just Jordan that he thought he was going. Are you with me? But from Jordan, where did the Spirit lead him to? For how many days? 40 days he was there. So by the time he returned now from the wilderness test after 40 days, and he now returned back to his village, the Bible said he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm trusting God that you are going to return. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean to return in the power of the Holy Spirit? Did you think that Jesus was walking like And they say, what is that? I say, power. <laughs> no. It was a conscious understanding in his life that now there is something that has settled on my life now. And it is the power of the Holy Spirit. So when he went to church, he did not do something different. They only gave him the book to read. He was not the one that selected what to read. They gave him. They gave him the first lesson to read. And the first lesson was in the book of Isaiah. Which chapter? Chapter 61. And as he read it, I want you to see how it happened now. Honestly, I'm trusting that these little instructions will help you not to miss the work that the Holy Spirit will start after today, everywhere you go, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what was it? And there was delivered to him, verse 17, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. 
and he closed the book. I want you to hear me. That was not the end of that book. Can somebody go to Isaiah 61? Read Isaiah 61. Read from verse 1 for us. Is anybody close to the mic? Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yes. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance to our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now, did you notice that the passage continued beyond where Jesus stopped? Eh? Why did he stop where he stopped? Why did he stop where he stopped? That was where the comforter, the power that he now carried, mm. whispered to him, say, stop there. The service today is taking a new turn. Ah, as he stopped and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister, and he sat down. Now look at a strange thing that has never happened before. What was the strange thing? And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were what? Fastened upon him. And then he did not allow that opportunity to pass. He was going to engage the Spirit of God. Look at that verse 21. Then, and he began to say unto them, This day, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. been reading this scripture for years but today this scripture is fulfilled in your very very ears and in your eyes the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel Do you know that it was that statement that started all that you are going to be reading from that verse 21 up to the end of verse 44? If I were to have time, but I don't have time, you will read it on your own. What I'm trying to say is this. If Jesus Christ went and kept quiet, and as people are looking at him, he just said, why are they looking at me? I've read. And he walked away. What would have happened to the anointing that from that day? What would have happened? It would have been it would have been encaged. It would seem as if nothing had happened to him. The Holy Spirit has come upon you. He will give you opportunity for him to manifest. Don't quench it. Don't ignore it. Many people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, but it did not become anything in their lives because they never, never took it to mean anything. They spoke in tongues. And that was all. But Jesus said, this day, today, this scripture 
is fulfilled in your ears. And from that point, the Bible said, and all bearing witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Huh? This is the boy that used to read lesson for us. And he read about six weeks ago before he said he was going to John for baptism. And we thought he was going to return after that John baptism. We don't know how he said uh, the Spirit led him to the wilderness and he was there for 40 days. Now he has returned. And for him to read the normal lesson, look at the gracious words that is coming out of his mouth. Is this not Joseph's son? Excuse me. Is this still Joseph's son? Until you engage the Holy Ghost, people will keep thinking it is the Joseph's son that used to be with them. And they may rubbish what God has put in your life and it may not manifest. So to engage the Holy Ghost, you need to walk in the consciousness that the comforter has come. Hallelujah. You need to defer to the comforter that has come by being led of him. By now asking and say, now Holy Spirit, now that you have come, should I still continue that journey? Do you know that after this meeting, I could see some of you trying to quickly arrange your journey back as if the Holy Ghost has not come? Did you ask him? Or do you not know that that was exactly what happened? Suddenly his plan changed. Instead of returning back to Nazareth, where did he go now? Wilderness. And they said, how long will you be there? I said, I don't know. He was there for 40 days. You see, when we are reading the Bible, we, we read it as if it didn't happen on earth. So some of us are not thinking that for them to say the Spirit led them to the wilderness for 40 days. Immediately after he was baptized, we never thought that, ah, that could be that I came to Boko. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me. And the Spirit is saying, you can't go back home yet. I actually want you to, to tarry. Because this issue is not finished. And you say, ah, ah, but my wife, but my wife, in their own days, there was no GSM. They simply obeyed. But you even have GSM. You could have just called your wife and say, Dali, the comforter has come. What I have been longing for for years has just happened during MLA. I don't think I will be able to rush back home. In fact, I have surrendered everything. And I'm only asking him, Lord, what will you have me do? And as I'm praying, it's like I need to stay back here. I don't know how long. Please pray for me. I only brought three or four clothes. I think I will manage with it. Such story will look strange. Abi? Because in your modern day, you have already planned out your life. I had done something that has disturbed some of my friends. They want to book me off for their meetings. They want to say, you know, we need to book this conference center. We need. I say, brother, sorry. I'm expecting a visitation during MLA. I can't mortgage my days now. If he comes, I don't want to be struggling with him. Because I'm sensing that Brother Bile that came to MLR will not be the Brother Bile that is going out of MLR. And I'm telling you, that thing has happened to me. 
I have entered into another phase. There's a fresh anointing coming on my head now. There is a different clarity that I'm beginning to see again in the word of God. And I don't want to behave as if he has not come. So if we are not going to lose what the Spirit of God has brought to us, we must be able to recognize that the Comforter has done what? Has come. We must not be asking, Lord, what will you have me do? If you say, clear, clear your date, clear your date. I want you to be with me. Ah. Don't say, we will do it after Christmas. Who told you that you need to celebrate Christmas this year? Except that you are, you are bound to a routine. Why the comforter has not come? You did all of that. Now that he has come, can you submit to him? You know, I was looking at different people that engaged the Holy Ghost that broke forth into revival. I found that they were interrupted. I found that when the Spirit of God came on Joshua, said, as the captain of the Lord holds, I am now come off your shoes. They all did that. But in our own generation, we have taken the Holy Spirit as an item. What did I say? We took him as an item. We continued as normal, as usual. And what could have become a mighty move had been scuttled and it became nothing. For Jesus, he acted. Praise the Lord. Am I asking you to become frivolous? Talk to me. Answer me, please. Am I asking you to become sporadic? I might say, okay, from now on, I'm not going home again. I'm not going home again. Mm, mm. They say, what is that? I say, no, 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 no. Mm, 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 mm. No, we are not talking of such arbitrariness. But we are talking about a deliberate deferring to the Holy Spirit as to know what is the next agenda for me. What is the next agenda for my life? Up till now, I still regretted that I was so immature because that day that the Holy Spirit began to explain John 3.16 to me, oh my God, I couldn't understand how the love of God started breaking in my heart Suddenly, everybody I saw, I only saw the love of God well in my heart. I would just be weeping. I would just see a brother. I say, oh, brother, oh, Jesus loves you. He gave all his life for you. And I would be crying. I don't know what was, was happening to me. Compassion just changed my heart. I just began to love everybody. Those experiences was why... Oh my God, if you open my heart now, you know that I just love the brethren. I just love all the churches. There's no denomination that I don't love. Because for me, the, Jesus loved them. And that even if they are misbehaving, it's because they didn't know. Such overwhelming thing just broke out in my heart. Nobody taught me. But that day, something was happening. But you know, it is now 3 p.m. since morning. No breakfast. No lunch yet. I didn't plan to fast. So. But because I had arranged with a, a prayer partner that by 3 p.m. we will meet to pray. So by 3, this person was here. Bragbile, Bragbile, it's time, oh, it's time, oh. Foolishly, foolishly. I just told the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, I have a prayer meeting. I put comma on, he has not finished the last statement he was making. I just put comma and I told myself, when I finish praying with that, uh, my prayer partner, I will come back. 
up to today as I'm talking to you, this is 35 years ago. Where that comma is, that's where that comma remained. I have not yet got back into that experience. I said, Lord, why, why, why did I do like this? Sir? And look at the prayer meeting I went for. I said, let us just pray that God will help us to pass exam. <laughs> ah! Oh, I was weeping. The persons don't understand what was I weeping about. They didn't know that I was saying, oh, pass exam for what? Is this why I left the Lord and I'm coming here to struggle about past exam? When he already told me, worry not about what you eat, what you will drink, that is taken care of. Ah. But I couldn't return. I did it giri, 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 to go back. I said, Jesus, I am your Holy Ghost. I am your Father. Ah. You know, you can't sing that song better than me. I know how to sing it too much. <laughs> King of kings, I am here. I am here for you nowhere he has gone when I tried, 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 tried for another one hour and he didn't come I, Uncle now started dealing with me you know, when God is not around, that's when everything will start dealing with you, brother all I'm saying is this the comforter has come just as he came on Jesus as he came on the day of Pentecost so as he come, it could become small if we treat it small. It could become a mighty move if we give him space. Can I ask you, will you give him space? Will you recognize that it is no longer business as usual? The comforter has come. I can tell you stories and stories and stories, but permit me to go on. I only beg God that this one will not become small. This outpouring will not end in this tent. As you are going, things will be breaking forth. What I'm waiting for is to hear reports Say, sir, things are broken forth. As I just stood up, something just happened. Oh, a sister just broke down. And as I was just speaking, I didn't know that I was dealing with what is inside her. I didn't know I was just saying my own. The Holy Ghost. All such testimonies, they can become mighty if we give him space. That's the first thing I saw that Jesus did. He engaged the Holy Ghost when he was baptized. He didn't return as an ordinary man. He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He was full of grace and truth. Amen. Are we together to that point? Eh? Now because of what I'm dealing with, I will also ask you to jump very quickly unto the apostles. So you can see the way we are doing the Bible study, I've taken number A of section 1 now under section D, and I'm going now to ask you to go to the apostles, number 2. The apostles in number 2. I want you to see that now. I want you to note the apostles' hunger and thirst for the power of God from on high in the, in the scriptures as they acted on the Lord's instruction to them about this matter. You know, in Luke 24, 49, he said, But tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. In Acts chapter 1, verse 4 to 14, what did they do? What did they do? They tarried. They waited, they prayed, all of them were in one room with one accord. Some of you may not understand why 
we were obeying what the Lord told us to do for MLR. God said, for this MLR, I want all the people that you will bring. The first fear we had, is it possible, God, that we will have over 20, 25, almost 30,000 people gathered in one place and they will not be scattered? And the Holy Spirit said, yes. My presence will keep them together. Has God kept us together during this meeting? Ah. Some of you are wondering, huh? what kind of meeting is this? I know you have gone to other meetings where it's like you went to supermarket. Do you remember that you have been here since 7 a.m.? Eh? What is it that is keeping you here? You that, you are, you are, I'm talking to you here. Can anybody keep you on your seat for two hours when you go for your convention? Talk to me. Do you not know that once they say, what are they saying there? The message has not said, let me just quickly go and make a call. You see that something else is here. It's the Holy Ghost. He said he wants all of us to be together in one accord. That what he wanted to do from this year's MLR is a transition. And that he is going to come and he's going to pour upon us an outpouring such as we have not known before. And that this will be a breakout onto the next phase of revival move in our nations. That's why we have obeyed. That's why we cancel food. That's why we, we, we said, okay, Lord, we have not done this before. We will do it if you ask us to do it. We just, and as I share with the brethren, and they say, yes, sir, we felt we should do it, and we agreed. That's why we are here. This is the third day. Has anything gone wrong? Because God said, do it. And as we were praying this morning, the Lord reminded me and said, yes, when I ask you to do something and you do it, I don't fail to do what I also said I will do. What God said he will do, he will also never fail to do it. There is going to be an outpouring. And God said, even if it appears like ordinary water in your mouth now, by the time you get to the place of the ceremonies, the, the, the masters of ceremony, and they are tasting it, it will be wine in their mouths. What may sound as if, ah, baby, you know, we prayed, we prayed. In fact, I felt something moving in my body, but I don't know. That's how sometimes I used to feel. No. No. By the time you go out now, you will see power. You will see a new dimension. It might not look big. It might not be a very big meeting. It might just be even in your morning devotion with your family. You have just said something and people start there crying. It may be in the little Bible study in your church during Sunday school. You just share something and people start there crying. Some of you are pastors and I'm telling you something has happened to your tongue from this meeting. I will hear a report of outbursts everywhere you go in the name of Jesus Christ. But you need to do one thing. Just, it's just a little issue to recognize that he has come. So in Acts chapter 2, when the apostles had obeyed and had prayed, praise the Lord. And in Acts chapter 2, they were with 
one accord in prayer and the Holy Spirit came upon them from verse 1 to 4. Now I wanted to see how did they maximize it in number B under 2. Apostles and the disciples, now look at B. What was the effect of their being endued with the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost? I want you to now look at chapter 2. All of you, are you already in Acts chapter 2? <laughs> in Acts chapter 2, can you quickly look at verse 14 to 16? But so that you can have a picture of what happened. The Bible says in verse 12, And they were all amazed and they were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, Man, this man, what is he? They are full of new wine. They are full of new wine. That was what they said. If Peter did not recognize that the comforter has come, if he accepted what the people were saying, that what is all this now? Why are they all talking all like that? Like that? What's the problem? Ah, and as they don't mind them, they are drunk. That's why they are all talking at the same time. If Peter kept quiet, what would have happened to the congregation that were gathering? Talk to me, please. They will have dispersed. With what? With what? They will say, look at them. They were drunk with new wine. Another one say, they are confused. Another one will say, madness, don't catch them. Another one will say, we don't know why they are shaking their head like lizard. Why? Because those upon whom the Spirit had come, they did not stand up to recognize what has happened to them. You know, sometimes the power of God comes on your life and people are trying to make it useless. And then they say, well, why, why are you shaking your head like that? He said, well, me, I don't know. It's just that as we are praying, I just find myself shaking my head, shaking my head. They say, you see, that's the beginning of madness. Stop shaking your head. Correct person doesn't do like that. Keep, keep your head straight. What have they done to the Holy Ghost on your life now? Quenched. But look at Peter now. How did he engage the power that came on them? You know, this thing might look little, but that's how it happens everywhere. What will become a mighty move of God may start in a small corner, may start in a small room, may start in a small prime meeting. And if it was not quenched, it can become a mighty work. That was how revival in Welsh started. The Welsh revival that all of us are talking about. Evan Robert had been seeking the power of the Holy Spirit for a long time. He was a student. He was a teacher's college student. And he was in the classroom one day when an overwhelming sense of his sin came on him. It's a conviction. He cried and cried and cried and went to meet the chaplain of the college. And the chaplain said, could it be that Jesus is knocking on your heart? Bow down and give your life to Jesus. That's how Evan Robert repented in a classroom. But from that night, he reported that his heart was so broken that he kept weeping. He became so tender-hearted. He began to pray for the Holy Spirit. Before the end of time, a supernatural power came on this man. So he said he just felt like talking to his colleague in the school and said, uh, let, let, let's just pray. That's how something started. By the time they now went to 
and he was just to pray with small girls. He was 19. The girls were 16, 17. They were all secondary school students. Only for them to kneel down to pray. They couldn't stop praying again. And the two, the three girls were singing a song. And as they were singing, the voice of their songs was attracting people. And that's how what became West Revival started. That swept the whole country. It could have stopped if they didn't know what to do with him. It could have ended as a mere story. But from that point, they couldn't stop holding everyday prayer. And then the revival broke out when they came for one prayer and somebody stood up to pray and this was his prayer. Bend the church and save the world. Bend the church, oh God, and save the world. That was a prayer. And as he repeated it three times, oh Lord, Bend the church. The arrogant people that were there started kneeling and said, Lord, bend me. Bend me. I am a hindrance to you. That's the beginning. And as they were repenting, God bending his church, sinners were getting saved. Anything can happen from this night. Anything can happen anywhere. I don't want you to start looking at the big, 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 big biggest uh, television screen that people call Reviver. No. I want you to recognize that the Comforter has come. You know, when we are praying this morning, the Lord, oh, I thank God for God. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very, very keen about this meeting. As we are praying, I noticed that, you know, because of, of our general attitude of thinking that people are not serious, we wanted to start going back to say, okay, Lord, help me to build my daily altar. Help me. Oh, God, oh, God. Because that's not the prayer. I told you yesterday that nevertheless, will you think that Thomas was a very consistent prayer fuma. Eh? Where did he go when Jesus came before? He was a truant. But when he, the young man said, unless I see, Jesus said, okay, since I want you to be part of Pentecost, let me go and show. But on the day of Pentecost, he was one of the twelve. Was he one of them? was filled with the Holy Ghost. Their life changed. Suddenly the Holy Spirit said, look, it is when my fire come that all these people's hearts will be turned to me. I said, okay, it's all right. Let the fire fall. So anything can break out from here and it will break out. I can see some of you are full gospel men here. Expect miracles of Expect what you've never seen before. You will see the glory of God. So let's see how did they engage what has just happened to them. But Peter, verse 14, standing up with the 11, what did he do? He lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Ah, uh ah. -uh. 
This is that. Ah. You know, I quickly rushed to go and see what was written in the book of Joel. When I go to the book of Joel, I was surprised that the book of Joel, and he tried to quote it, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants, on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now let me ask you, that day that he was saying, this is that that Prophet Joel spoke about. Let me ask you, did the sun turn to darkness? Answer me. Was there an eclipse of the sun on the day of Pentecost? Talk now. Did the moon become blood? Please answer me. Was there fire and vapor or smoke? So why did he say this is that? Actually, <laughs> the Holy Spirit that was working in him said, actually, this is that. They were not being arrogant. They were only engaging the Holy Ghost. And as far as he was concerned, it was the prophecy of joy that is taking place that day. And as he began, look at what he did immediately. He just went on. I was asking a question. Did he prepare a script before that moment? Who said no? Let me see your hand. Did you say no? Why did you say no? Eh? The Bible says suddenly. They were not planning it. They were in a room. They were not planning to preach. So how did he now begin to pull out the word of God like this? The Holy Ghost, when he comes, he will bring, you to, he will bring to your remembrance everything that I've said unto you. Some of you don't understand that when the Holy Spirit comes, passages that you thought you have never known will be coming. And you yourself will be surprised. Why, how did I understand that passage like that? Is a comforter that has come. When the Holy Ghost came on our own life, I suddenly saw that the scripture became something else. And the Holy Spirit can just pull one scripture from somewhere. And before I finish, something has already happened. I say, ah, I don't want to miss this again. Do you know that that day, as this man was now reading, I mean speaking, speaking spontaneously, I said, theologians, they would describe the message he preached that day as extemporous or extemporaneous, whatever they, you call it. And when they use the word extemporous or extemporaneous, what they are saying is that this is something that you are saying, of course. Theologians don't like that. A correct theologian will come here and say, let us pray. You will adjust his goggle because everything he, he will say, what has he done? He has written it down and he has practiced it.
You think I don't know? <laughs> Sometimes there is this big mirror in the pastor's study that when he finish preparing his sermon, he will now put his stopwatch and put it on one side. Then he will adjust himself and stand before the mirror and begin to present his sermon in, the, in front of the mirror. And he will be timing himself if he finished to time. If he's short for five minutes, he will go over it again. I say, okay, what do I need to adjust? So by the time you see him coming out, when it is 20 minutes or 15 minutes, you will see that on dot of 15 minutes, he has said the last thing that he wrote down. When me and Tewase went to Radio Elwa, you remember that day, me and him, we went to Radio Elwa. We were, we were coming from Maiduguri. We went for one night first uh, Easter conference where they asked us to preach and we were coming. So we slept in Joss. We did another meeting. So that Tuesday morning, it is the Tuesday after Easter, the Lord said, as I was praying, he said, Today, I have opened the door onto Radio Elwa for you. Go now to Radio Elwa office. So I told Tewas, I said, let's go to Radio Elwa. We don't know. So we got to challenge area in Joss. So we're asking, where's the Radio Elwa? They said, go this way. So we went in. And as we went, <laughs> We saw the receptionist. I said, good morning, ma. He said, yes. Who are you? I said, you don't know us, but I'm brother Bidia Kane from, from Boko. No. I think we're still in Kasinala then. They're from Kasinala. I said, eh? Can we see the Elwa director? He said, did he give you an appointment? I said, no. He doesn't know we're coming, but we need to see him. He says, okay, let me check. So he went in, and this old Baba was very excited to receive us. So we sat down. So I asked him, I said, Sir, we were praying and we wanted to know how we can put the radio program on living, I mean, the living seat on Radio Elwa. The man said, Eh? Uh -huh. What? You mean you are interested in putting radio, I mean, message on Radio Elwa? We have been looking for Nigerians that would do that. But for us, we don't undo English. English is done from Liberia. I will, if you can sit down, you can write your application, and then we will send it to Liberia if they want. But meanwhile, can you preach for us in Yoruba? I say yes. Meanwhile, I didn't carry Yoruba Bible. I borrowed Yoruba Bible from their studio. I told them what I said. They say I can, I should preach in Yoruba. So the man said, "But you are not prepared." I said, "No, no, no. Don't worry." So we went in. The studio manager said, "Where are your scripts?" Because you know we work the time here. You can't preach more than this. And if you speak, we we'll cut you off. He said, "Where's your script?" I said, "Script." I don't know about scripts. I just want to preach. Ah, no, no, no. All this uh, just talking from your head, we don't like that. We don't take that. I say, okay, well, but let me try. That's how we sat down there. I gave the first message in Yoruba language. 30 minutes. The man said, can you try more? I say, yes. <laughs> so, just like that, I was given seven messages on a straight. He said, ah, they started hearing it. People said they were hearing my voice all over the radio area in Europe. But they said, ah, right, Billy, we heard you preach. I said, well, it's by, it's by mistake. And <laughs> <laughs> but it was not a mistake. God knew. And that day, in another two weeks, we received a letter 
all the way from Liberia. Saying, we rejoiced greatly when we saw your letter. And they showed us the slot. That's how we put the word of God on Radio Ewa. People will think that we walked about it. No, the Holy Spirit just say, go there. So, can I ask you that the Spirit of God that has come upon you is active. He can speak. And he does not speak carelessly. Even if you did not know he was going to speak before, when he's, he said, open your mouth, I will feel it. So when Peter stood up and began to speak, to speak, to speak, to speak, I was wondering, where was that coming from? I understood the Holy Ghost. By the time he finished, look at the result. In verse 36 and 30, I mean 36 to 47, look at the result. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine that? They have just received the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? He did not plan the sermon. But when he finished speaking, and they said, what shall we do? Because the Holy Ghost is working. He said, repent, each one of you. Be baptized of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the people said, we are ready. We are ready. We are ready now, now, now. 3,000 were baptized in one day. Holy Ghost. Please, let somebody tell me, how much did Peter spend to organize the crusade that brought 3,000 souls to the kingdom of God in one day? Eh? That's the Holy Ghost. That's the kind of power that is coming upon your life. That God can do spontaneous things. Something can start in your parlor. And before you know it, your sitting room will not take people again. And outside, then you will open the thing and then you will and they say what is happening there holy ghost are we going to allow the holy spirit to walk in our lives eh right they engaged him first they recognize who has come Number two, they gave him space. Jesus gave space. The apostles gave space. And as they did, the result we saw began to spread. Please, when you have time, read up to verse 47. But I read verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So let me ask you now, what happened immediately after the day of Pentecost from that class? What happened? Let's talk now. What happened? A meeting that they did not plan for. They didn't plan for it. They were in the upper room. The upper room was a borrowed house. When the Holy Ghost fell on them. And from there, thousands came. And they said, we are not going home. 
and they were baptized. I was wondering who was doing the baptism. Because if you are going to baptize 3,000 people in one day, where are the Baptist pastors here? Let me see your hand up. Baptist pastors. How many can you possibly baptize in one day before you get tired? If you are going to do it by immersion, I'm not talking of sprinkling. I'm not saying. I'm talking of I baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then you bring him up. Remember your back. Especially when you are going to baptize a very hefty man. <laughs> to, to lower him as you are lowering him. <laughs> you know, you know, some are so fearful that. <laughs> and then you put it. Now, to carry him up is another problem. And they are to do that for 3,000 in one day. The Holy Ghost. It means that even Thomas was baptizing people. It means, <laughs> it means <laughs> all, this, all the other brothers, those that have just repented, they were baptizing people because the Holy Ghost has come upon them. Don't drag me into those empty uh, uh, doctrine that you used to ask when the Holy Ghost has not come. I can imagine someone say, excuse me, are you not saying we can just baptize anybody anytime? Don't ask me such useless question. You go and let the Holy Ghost walk. When Holy Ghost has walked and you see souls that are weeping and crying and they are ready to, to go anywhere with God for you, you will see what we are talking about. And what is your problem? If you went somewhere and the whole village repented and they are crying, 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 what's your problem? Don't you go and ask for the, your pastor that has a cassock on his neck and say, sir, uh, 500 people just repented and they need to be baptized. They have been sitting in catechism class since the since the first day we went there, they have not missed. I'd come and test them. Which pastor will not be happy with you if you deliver 500 souls for him to baptize and he will just start in one day and he has not spent a cobble? You see, church planting is so costly nowadays because the comforter has not come. You are not hearing me at all. I said your ministry is so expensive because the comforter has not come. When the comforter comes, things happen. How were they able to stand steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine? Where did they get seats? Where did they get the seat that sat 3,000, I will tell you the truth. They sat on the floor. Those that could not sit on the floor, they went and cut uh, bamboo and sat on it. What is interesting to them is to hear the word of God. Where did they sleep? How did they eat? These are all good, good problems of revival. May we have good problems in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When revival bursts forth because the comforter has come, things begin to happen effortlessly. Souls begin to get saved. And they are, every day, they are coming to knock on your, on your door and say, you have not taught me how to have quiet time. I, 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 I came this morning. I wanted to show me how to have my quiet time. 5 a.m., they are knocking on your door. That's a good problem. Will you pray for it? Will you pray for it? A brother was teaching in a secondary school. And I could not forget what happened. This must be 1986 or 1986, actually. 
in in Anyangba, no, in, in Ochaja. I had met with this brother somewhere in 1985, and I remember he came and said, Sir, the message you gave about the double portion is touching me. And what can I do? He fell down. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed. He said, Look, I want to go back. I want to go to Egalaland. I want to go and help my people. I want to go and preach. Because of what happened to him, he left what he was doing in Makodi and took teaching appointment in Ochaja. And then he said, one day he was praying, the Lord asked him, can you donate one hour every day to pray for the souls of Ochaja boys? So he didn't understand that, but since the Spirit told him, he began to pray. Every 4 p.m., he would just go and sit and begin to intercede for Ochaja boys. And as he was doing this, one day he just finished praying and he said, the Spirit told him that, and I will begin to visit these boys. So while he was sitting, one of the notorious students of Ochaja Boys High School, very notorious, walked up to him like a joke and said, Sir, I want you to preach to me. Ah. The brother said he thought the boy just came to pull trouble. And then he said, no, 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 I'm serious. I had a dream that my soul is in danger and that I should come and see you, that you will tell me something. That's how this brother brought his Bible and preached to this boy. And the young man repented. We thought it was a small thing. That's how that boy went and enter the hostel. And because he's a ringleader of wickedness, everybody knew him. But when he went to the hostel, he started crying. I'm a terrible sinner. Hey, don't follow me again. And then he began to speak. And as he was weeping, nobody knew the conviction that was falling on the other boys in his room. They were also crying. They were also crying. The following day, they went to class and the boys raised up his hand before the teacher would teach. Say, I have something to say, sir. And he told the story of how his life had been terrible. But yesterday, Jesus touched his life and he thought he should confess the terrible thing he had been doing. Before he finished, the whole of his class started weeping. This thing I'm telling you happened in 1986 in Ochaja Boys. And as this thing was happening, the spirit began to move. And these boys started repenting. They would just confess, just not confess. We don't know how he jumped onto the sister school directly opposite. You know, if you are from Ochaja, there is Ochaja boys, Ochaja girls. The spirit jumped to Ochaja girls. Their own was even different. The girls started repenting. Oh, I'm a woman. I'm, I, 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 you know, they were confessing all kinds of sins. The long and short of what I'm telling you is that for two weeks, nobody could go to class. Students were not ready for any lesson. They were just waking up, crying, singing, praying, crying, singing, repenting. They sent for me. I left Katina Ala to go. The brother said, sir, what you have been telling me has happened. What do we do now? And the two principals of the Ochacha boys, Ochacha girls, they are Christians. They said, Bragule, we have not been able to do anything, no. These children are just repenting. But then the Quibo church of those days 
Say, no, we don't want that kind of foolishness. Dismiss them. Because there was no understanding. Of course, there's problem with the Ministry of Education. How can you keep school running and you are not teaching? And they are waking up, they are crying, they are repenting, things are happening. I commended the principals that time. One of them is my friend, Baba Gada. We will meet in his house and we are praying. We are just saying, God, don't let this thing stop. Lord, please help us. Please help us. We don't know how to handle this. Please help us, the Holy Spirit. There can be revival. But you see, wherever the Holy Ghost broke out, somebody took time to engage him. A young brother was just saying, God said I should donate one hour of prayer. Just to be interceding for, my, for the boys in the school where I'm teaching. And the result of it was an outburst. And if not because there was not enough wisdom on how to handle that, that could have overrun Igala land that year. Because fire never says it is enough. Are you hearing me? There may be some of you there that were students that time that were affected. If not for the things that happened, it could have become something because do you know what, what was the papambari of it? When the principal said, well, we don't know what to do. Let's, let's dismiss them to go home. The children said, don't worry about feeding us. We are not going home. We just want to stay here and be praying and be praying. Now, I'll tell you what happens when the Spirit comes. When the Holy Ghost comes to a place, the devil also gets a bit revived. Because he is saying, how can I counteract this? How can I counterfeit it? So before we know it, other guests also start to say, I'm a witch. So that was going to discredit the move as if we were just uh, bewitching the children. And that is what the denominational leaders carried and said, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are giving our children demons. But you know, thank God. That was about 28 or almost 30 years. God has moved in the Bible church now. If this kind of thing happened, it won't be quenched. Because there are now leaders, superintendents, uh, say pastors, who are filled with the Holy Ghost, who are also asking, send us revival. So if God moves again, it will not quench. Are you hearing me? So what has happened, the comfort that has come, must be engaged. We must engage him by obeying him. We will not see the import of the power that has descended upon our lives if we don't engage him by obeying him. So they engaged the spirit that came upon them by obeying him. Praise the Lord. The result of it was that souls were saved. The definite effect of the power of the Holy Spirit on the ministry of the apostles towards the new disciples in this scripture was that when they stood steadfastly in the apostles, they were teaching. We have been doing meetings, we have been doing discipleship classes, and some of you, your class is 20, another class is uh, 25, another class is uh, 50, and you are excited. Now the comforter has come. Prepare for enlargement. What did I say you should do? Get ready for enlargement. Get ready for what you did not plan for. 
good problems will visit you after here in the name of Jesus Christ. How did they manage the outbursts? The Holy Spirit. Now, so how else do we engage the power of the Holy Spirit? I'm back to Jesus. He preached and taught in the power of the Holy Spirit before the eyes of the people. You know, we read Luke 4, but now I want you to read Luke 5, 15 to 17, very quickly. I think uh, for this hour, if we even stop at this and we begin to pray, uh, we can take off the final instructions that God will give us when we come for our night meeting. But are you there? Read verse 14. I want you to read chapter 5 of Luke, verse 14, 15, 16, and 17. And he charged him to tell no man, but go and show thyself to the priest, yes. and offer for thy cleansing, according as Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. Yes. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. Uh-huh. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Uh-huh. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Amen. What am I talking about now? The Holy Ghost is not arbitrary. Please hear this. It's very important. When some of us received the Holy Spirit and we went back and did nothing and we were expecting that the Spirit would be moving our roof, and I said, Spirit! Hmm. You alone in your room, that is cut out of madness. That's not how the Holy Spirit operates. Holy Spirit engages the tools of the Word of God to demonstrate His power. One of the things that the Spirit has come to do in your life now, and I want you to know it, is that He has come with compassion. You will just see that your heart has suddenly become tender. And the Holy Spirit will begin to show you people that you used to bypass before and you never saw them. You start seeing them in the light of people needing help. The passion for souls will begin to grow in you because the Holy Spirit actually came into your life so that God can empower you to be a witness. He has not come for decoration. So you see, for Jesus, the Bible said, it came to pass he was in a certain city and a man full of leprosy who seen Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Oh brothers, you will see the glory of God as you go from here. But you see, the glory of God is not in a vacuum. It is not these organized programs. 
It is as you begin to go that the Spirit of God will be moving in you to have compassion on people. And as the Holy Spirit begins to move in you to have compassion on people, it is compassion. Oh Lord, Lord, please help me to explain this as simply as I can within a short while. Many of you want the power of the Holy Spirit not as an answer to meet the need of people that you are passionate about. You want power to show that you are powerful. You would like to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit to enhance your ego that you are now important. The Holy Spirit doesn't come for that. That's why many people will not see the manifestation and the outbursts. The Holy Ghost that has come has come with a mission. It's a mission to draw souls to Christ. And so, you know what happened? God will put passion in your heart for people. You know that all the people that Jesus healed, if you look at the context, he wasn't healing them so as to show them, to say, come and see what the man of God is doing. He was not doing it so that they can begin to say, yeah, a great man is here. Who is? No, 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 no. It was compassion. A, a man full of press, leprosy just saw him. And this man that had been rejected everywhere because once leprosy come on you, you can't even stay in your house again. You can't attend church again. You are isolated. They have sent you to what we used to call in Oguma Show those days, Agua in All those, you know, leprosy, leprosy, what do you call leprosy? Something here. Uh, leprosy settlement. In Yoruba, in, in, in Ogumansha, they call it Agua Iniriti. What's the meaning of that, my wife? Hopeless camp. They come for hopeless people. When they are sending you there like this, they conclude that you are hopeless. And they are not expecting you to come back. There you will die. Because in those days, nobody had found a medical cure. For leprosy, it's not like that now. So even when we are praying, we'll be praying. Oh, it's a prayer point. <laughs> you can imagine that. We are saying, Lord, don't let them send me to Agua Inireti. Imagine that. Those that are going there, we have no compassion for them. We are only using them as our own prayer point. But now, when Jesus saw a man like that, not for show, and I'll show you that it's not for show, the man fell down and said, Lord, I know if you want, you can make me whole. And Jesus said, I will. I really want you to be whole. And he put his hand on him. Ah, what if Jesus caught leprosy? But he didn't care about that. There's a man in need. And as he did that, the power of the Holy Spirit came to walk, and the man was healed. And as he was healed, are you hearing me? He told the man, said, don't tell anybody. It's not about telling people. Go now, go and show yourself to the priest and give them your offering as they normally collect it. Can you imagine? Jesus performed a miracle. He was not going to take the thanksgiving offering. He was saying, them, go back to your church. Go and give them your thanksgiving offering. Tell them. Don't let them know that I'm the one who did it for you. Just go and give them money. But, you know, the, man, the woman started singing. Larry, what's the meaning of that? <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I, can, I don't know it in English. That's why I'm dancing like that. Say, God has done something great for me. I cannot keep it to my body. I cannot, I cannot hide it. I have to tell. 
So the man was telling everywhere. Before you know it, a whole crowd started running after Jesus. It's compassion that made the gift of the Spirit in his life to break out. It's not a desire for show. The power that is coming on your life now is not for show. Are you hearing me? It's not for an arbitrary display. You don't return and say, I've just come back from Goku and the power has come. Hallelujah. All of you that are crippled, come here, come here, come here. Karobo Shira. God will show you something here now. God will show you something now. Um, I can tell you frankly that God will disappoint you. Because you are misusing the power that has come. The power that has come operates out of compassion. People will be healed not because we wanted to add them to our credential. They will be healed, they will be blessed because we, 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 we love them. And we are praying, Lord, do something for this man. Deliver him. That's what we bring miracles. Now, many of you don't have that. All the people that pray to you about power, they have demonstrated it as if it's an achievement and it's a status symbol. And you're also saying, give me also power that on whosoever I lay my hands, they will catapult. No. This anointing that has come upon you is not for show. It's for a compassionate ministry. What did I say it is? It's for compassionate ministry. I have experienced few miracles. Few, I say few miracles. And I have found that every time such a miracle took place, something that has happened is that I have come to a place I say, God, wouldn't you help this sister? Wouldn't you help this man? Why should people continue to disgrace your name because of this case. Lord, help us. When we come to a place of compassion, I've always seen that the Holy Ghost is ready to act. I had gone to a meeting in Abuja. In those days, I used to go to all Christian fellowship mission every January to preach. And in this January meeting, I went, and a lady stopped me. Said, "Sir, I need to talk to you. You know, I first felt, no, why are you disturb me? I just finished preaching. I'm tired." He said, "Please, I need to see you." When I saw how desperate she was, I said, "Okay, come and see me where they lodge me tomorrow morning." Tomorrow morning, before I finish my quiet time, she was there. Oh my God, I'll tell you something that day. She broke down and started weeping. I said, what's the matter, ma? What's the matter, madam? He said, she said, my husband has given me ultimatum. We have married now, maybe for 10 years or 12 years. And I have not got a baby. And my husband had said that he was born, he must born. He did not plan to be buried. His people in the village have called him that if he doesn't know what he is doing, they know what they are doing. And the man has told the wife, if you don't have a baby, forget it. I'm going to replace you because I need a child. Ah. I don't want anybody to, to, to bring barrenness to my life. So go and think about it. And I gave you the next few months. If you don't have a baby, if you are not pregnant, finish. And this woman came. 
and started telling me, this is what my husband said. And she broke down. I don't know what happened to me myself. I started crying. I said, God, but it's not the fault of this woman now. Why this, oh God? Why this, oh God? And the Lord says, so what do you want me to do? Suddenly, the Holy Spirit said, what do you want me to do? Then I stood up. I said, Madam, what do you want God to do for you? And this woman said, listen, listen. This woman said, I want to have a baby. And I need to be pregnant between now and March. Because that's the ultimatum this man gave. And he said, excuse me, sir, if I deliver a baby girl, it will not solve the problem. I need a baby boy to secure my marriage. Look, I am not a faith preacher, but when compassion hooks me, nothing is impossible for God to do. So, I just told her, I said, is that what you want? He said, yes, sir. I said, go. By this time next year, you will bring your baby boy here in the name of Jesus. Amen. No prayer. No more prayer. It's done. I said, go. She said, is that all? You have not prayed. I said, we have prayed. He said, but all the other men of God have been going. They will tell me to fast. I said, no, 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 no. You don't need to fast again. You are having your baby by this time next year. You bring that baby. And he said, boy. You know, it was so casual. She left. Me, I forgot. So, I went again to that meeting the following year. I saw a happy woman coming with about a two or three month old baby boy. And then she came and said, sir, I said, yes, I need to see you. I said, no, I don't have time. I don't have time. Please, I'm very busy. He said, no, I need to see you. I said, what is it? He said, I want to bring your boy to you. You remember that you have a boy. I say, me? <laughs> Where? Ah. He said, you forgot. I was the lady that came 7 a.m. to where they were lodging you when you came for this meeting last year, crying that my husband gave me an ultimatum that by March, if I was not pregnant, my marriage is finished. And you felt so moved. You were crying. And you stood up and said, what do I want? And I told you, I need to be pregnant between now and March. And I need to have a baby boy. And you told me, go! It is done. Now, this is your boy. This is your boy. You see, it is not, it is not, about anything. There is power for all kind of miracles. But it only comes if it is a genuine out of compassion. Not for video coverage. Not to ridicule the people that are being healed. Not to reduce their dignity as if it was their fault. And not to promote you as if you are the champion. I have seen miracles like that. But each time, it is because something moved in our heart with compassion. Very, very notable things that God can do 
effortlessly when we have come to carry the passion of the Spirit, the passion of Jesus for souls, then the power is released. So, as you go, there is power here. The comforter has come, but he needs a compassionate heart to operate. We cannot be describing the kind of miraculous things that we have seen. The reason why it is not a phenomenon in our meeting to be announcing it, to be announcing it, is because we didn't think that that is the issue. They were the things to follow us as we keep going. Maybe tonight we will give some people a chance to bring the baby they collected here. Plus MLR. They just get near down here. And we say, you have your baby in the name of Jesus. And they have, they have brought that baby here now. So what is the big deal about that? God can do it. There is power to heal. There is power to deliver. There is power to set men free. But it always comes out of what? Compassion. Compassion. Not passion for fame. Not passion for prominence. We have experienced what God can do when he wants to walk. And we will see greater things than this in the coming days. Hallelujah. So as Jesus did that, multitude were coming and they were coming to be healed by him of the infirmities and look at Jesus he withdrew himself to where and prayed so this morning we kept saying that praying is not what we do only for the Holy Ghost to come for the Holy Ghost to continue to find expression in our hearts, prayer continues. Concerted prayers. Compassionate prayers. Prayers that is coming because you are seeking the glory of God. Not because you want to start your ministry and you want to make a name. That's not what this anointing is coming on you for. The Lord will give us instructions as we go from here in the name of Jesus Christ. It came to pass on a certain day that he was teaching that there were Pharisees, doctors of the law, sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I was only saying that Jesus operated, he engaged the power of the Holy Spirit in what he did. And so the disciples that were following him, they were seeing a man who lived in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not for sure. And God is going to do that here for us in the name of Jesus. Do you believe what we are saying? Are you expecting such a miracle? You are not asking me. You are not answering me. I want to hear your loud yes. 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 The comforter has come. The manifestation of his coming will become overwhelming as you keep going. Carry compassion for souls. Carry compassion for souls. I tell you it's compassion. I was in the Baptist church some years ago 
and I preach on the pulpit and some people gave their life to Christ. So I sat down to counsel and I met this woman that I was counseling. And on that conviction, she confessed to me and said, Sir, my husband don't know what I'm doing. Because we didn't have baby for the many years we have married. His closest friend, the friend of my husband, came and told me that he was the one ordained to open the way. So me and him, we have been sleeping together. But all of that, I have not got pregnant. As you preach today, my heart was caught. I want to give my life to Christ. This is in a Baptist church. She wept. I wept with her. Then I don't know how it happened. They put me on roster for another week. This is two weeks in between. I preached. One man came out. Along others. I sat down in counseling. Only to discover that this is the husband of the woman of two weeks ago. He also came and gave his life to Christ. And he also told me a story that was very pathetic. He said, I have married for years. My wife had not got a child. I was under pressure. And I wanted to check whether it was me who was having problem or her. So I have started sleeping with other women. But when you preach, my heart was caught. So I had not yet known. I said, where is your house? He described it. Only for me to describe that. The house that he described to me was the house that the woman described to me two weeks ago. When I visited them, the two of them, you know, they have individually told me what they were doing under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, but they have not been able to tell each other. Now I am sitting in their midst. Everybody was quiet. There was a kind of trembling in that house. So I said, yes. Your wife gave her life to Christ two weeks ago. Did she tell you? He said, no, she has not. He said, excuse me, sir. I have not been able to tell him because I'm afraid. I said, you gave your life to Christ last Sunday. Have you been able to tell your wife? He said, well, I told her that I'm giving my life to Christ, but I could not tell her. Please, do, when you hear them clapping, they are not hearing. Can you help us? Uh -huh. So, I said, he said, I have not because I couldn't tell her what I told you. So I sat in there and I said, Madam, God has delivered you. God has delivered your husband. Tell him what you told me. Tell her what you told me. And I sat there. I'm telling oh, look, you will see revival. You see, what I'm talking to you about, it may look small, but I've seen revival. I've seen, I've seen families just turned like that under the power of the Holy Ghost. The two of them were trembling. But because I was there in their midst, the, man, the woman confessed and said, your friend had been sleeping with me. The man said, what? Is that a shivery? I said, now tell her what you also told me. <laughs> when he also opened his mouth and said, look, I would have been annoyed, but I'm also equally guilty. Incidentally, he also had been sleeping with one of those ladies that, were, that pretended to be the friend of his wife. I said, now, four has been divided by two. The two of you are guilty, but we are going to God in prayer. So they knelt down, we prayed. So when we finished praying, compassion came on me. I said, God, the whole problem of this infidelity is no baby. Father, 
You are the God that does impossible things. Father, open their womb, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give them a baby to seal their conversion. We prayed in their house. The two of them started coming for our Bible study. Rufus, Adedibu, you will, you will remember them. They were coming. They became zealous. Then I left, I left Ibadan for Kasnala. When I was coming back, they heard that I was coming. I saw how jubilant they were. And they came and said, Sir, we didn't know that it was sin that has blocked our lives. After you prayed and released us that day, the next month, my wife missed her period. We thought it was a joke. We did not even know. But this is your baby. I have many babies that we will celebrate when we get to heaven. This is your baby, sir. This is your baby, sir. I say, oh God. So God can do anything like this. But they are not issues for show. That's why we have not been printing bulletins. That's why you have not seen us telling you hey, when the man of God went to Cote d'Ivoire. When they want to go against it, that's not the reason. We are looking for a revival that will consume all of us, that will bury all of us, and only lift up Jesus Christ. Do you want that? Uh -huh. We will stop for this afternoon on that note. Don't forget your Bible study. That's what we are still dealing with. But we stop on this note. We will now rise to pray. The comforter has come. He is here. You see, there are several songs I thought we'll be able to sing, but it's not in our booklet. I would have wanted you to raise for us. God is here, and that to bless us. See the clouds already burning. Way to draw the grateful shout. Let it come, O oh Lord, we pray thee. Let the shout of blessings fall. We are waiting, we are waiting. Oh, revive the hearts of all. Let it come, O oh Lord. The shower of blessings for we are waiting, we are waiting. Oh, revive us of all. Please stand up as we pray together. Let it come, oh Lord. We pray, let the shower of blessings for we are waiting. I want you to hear me as we begin to pray. The comforter is here. And when the anointing comes, the Bible says, by the reason of the anointing, every yoke is broken. Do you know that yokes are getting broken in this meeting already? Yokes of sickness, yoke of barrenness, yoke of stagnation, yoke of dryness, they are breaking. But beyond those personal yokes, God is going to open doors. Great things will begin to happen in response to the compassionate body that the Spirit of God will bring on your life. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I recognize that the Comforter is here. I believe the outpouring of the Holy Spirit has come upon my life. 
I cannot deny that you are here. Thank you for being here. Declare it, the Spirit has come. The power of God is here. An anointing beyond human wisdom has come. Breaking yokes, setting men free, releasing vessels for glorious ministry. Souls will be saved. Those that have struggled for years, heaven is going to remember them. The Spirit is here. I have found myself praying for several of you that are pastors today that God will touch your lips with a fresh fire. You are going for something new, something great, something eternal is coming. Compassion is breaking forth in your spirit. You will see revival in your nations. God will begin to do marvelous things. Things that have been judged impossible, God will begin to do it. Riba sata yaba baba makoro boshiba. Remo sonto robosa. Yeka to remo sanda baba ba. Declare it. I want you to not only know that the Holy Ghost is here. When Holy Ghost comes, you don't behave as if he's not here. He has come. When the Holy Ghost comes, he has come to do something. He has come with power. He has come with revelation. He has come to open the things of God to you. You don't just go on as usual. You will engage him now. Engage him by acknowledging him. Acknowledge that the Holy Ghost is here. Acknowledge, say, I acknowledge your presence in my life now. I acknowledge that you have come, you have arrived. I now know that I'm no more the way I came. You have been operating a barren ministry for years. But the fertilizing power of God has come. Something is going to change about you now. Rasoto Yorobo Sanda Baba Korobo Shiba. Rema Mama 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 Sanda Yaba Korobo Skila. Yanta Karuba Sila. I want you to pray now. Keep praying. The Holy Spirit is here. And we will engage Him. If you put on your engine and you are firing it but you did not engage the gear it will not move it will not move the Holy Spirit is here not for decoration it's for service you won't be going as you have been going as if he is not here he has come the Holy Ghost has come the Spirit of the Lord has come The mighty God is here. And he has come to bless you. He has come to change your story. He has come to take away your barrenness. Your spiritual barrenness. Your spiritual dryness. He has come to turn you to another man. There's a young man hearing me here today. The Holy Ghost has come on your life. The things that God is saying about you, we will see it. It will come to pass. They said, this is that that Prophet Joel spoke about. Jesus said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. That was what brought all the adverse. You cannot go out of Boko as if the Holy Ghost has not come. As you surrender your life to Him now. Some of you for the first time, you find yourself speaking in a new language. Go ahead. Go ahead. Some of you now, the Holy Ghost is giving you a compassion. You are beginning to see your villages. You are beginning to see your, your students. You are beginning to sense a new move in your heart. 
don't quench it it's meant for service it's meant for service go ahead pray anyhow you like to pray the comforter has come the power of the Holy Ghost from heaven see the cloud already bending see the cloud already bending There are people that are having psychiatric problem and the Lord will give you compassion just to offer a word of prayer and they will be finished. When it is no more because you want to be a demon caster. Go ahead, go ahead. Engage in the power of the Holy Ghost for the outburst God is speaking to us about. All my resource persons, the comforter has come. You are not going to go back the way you came. Millet students, the comforter has come. You are not returning as their barren tree. Your road is going to board from here. Remo Sanda Yaba Karama Mama, Orima Sanda Yaba Baba, Orimo Sanda Yaba Baba, Orimo Sanda Yaba Baba. Don't be a spectator. Get into God tonight. Let something happen to you inside. All the bounds of unbelief, unbelief be gone in the name of Jesus. Deal with every unbelief. Everything that keeps telling you it cannot be you. It can be anybody else, but it cannot be you. Why not? Why not? The comforter has come. This promise is unto you, it's unto your children. And to all those that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. This is your promise. Claim me today. I am included. I am included. The comforter has come to me. The comforter has come upon my life. The Holy Ghost is here now. I am part of this. I am part of this. I am part of this. Karuba Samba Roba Sakata Burikaska Bakuriabas Rebash Toko Dabaska Basko Arise and set us in motion, O Lord. The man of war, give us, oh, give us, oh Lord, thine auction, and all, toss for thy war, oh Lord, arise and set us in motion. O Lord, the man of war, new hearts, more love, more passion for souls in Satan's train. We took on earth. Use us to make us fishers of men. Can you pray now? New hearts, more love, more passion. That is the key to releasing the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you play with God this night? Father, a new heart, a new heart. 
new heart, a heart of compassion, a heart of compassion, a heart of love. Break this hard heart. Lord, break this hard heart. Rumors scandal of Askabakuriabasa. This heart that is congealed. This heart that does not move. This heart that is not moved with the problems of people. With the plight of people. Do something to this our heart. Can you pray with God this night? You must go home with another heart. A new heart. A new spirit I will put into you. I will take away the hard, stony heart. I will put a heart of flesh. I will put a heart of compassion. Receive it tonight. Reba skondo lo bakari abasa. Reba skaba ruba skande le bas. Reba skabu kadabashi. Lo bakanda la basa. A heart exchange. Can you plead with God? Exchange my heart. Take away this stony heart. Take away this stony heart. Give me a heart of passion. A fresh passion. A compassion. Passion that moves me to men. Passion that moves me to tears. Passion that moves me to help. Passion that moves me to pray, to intercede. Rebaska bakande le basuri basa. Raba kande la basuba. Di basko makanda la basha. Don't be a spectator tonight. Press in into God. It's time to receive equipment for revival. A new heart. An equipment for revival, a compassionate heart, press into God now and receive in the name of Jesus. Rebaska, Rebaska Bakoas, Rebaska Baskuba Shabakande, Nerobasa, Lord, an exchange, an exchange tonight, an exchange. A divine transaction going on in our hearts. Set my soul aflame. Ribaska baskoba sabash. Ribaska taba korea basa. Neba korea basabak. Lord, make me a fish out of men. Make me a fish out of men. Make me a minister, a servant of men, one who attends to the needs of the people on behalf of my Father God. Give me such a heart. Make me a fisher of men to fish men out, to deal with men, to engage with men until their problems are solved. Lord, give me such a heart. Reba suri abaska, mora abaska raba subasta, ne maskuri baska ba konde le baska, rika saba saba konde masa. Father, do this for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus name we pray I think that God I know that God is delivering into our hands certain equipments for revival equipments for revival and the next one we are going to cry to God for this evening is the spirit of prayer and intercession you have been struggling in your prayer life you get tired easily you can't pray alone you have never done a night vigil by yourself that is going to change can you go to god and say lord baptize me with the spirit of prayer the spirit of intercession 
Riba skonda la basa baka de bosa. Riba soma kanda la basha ba. Traveling as in bath for souls. Riba konda la basuri a basa ba. Equipment for revival. Bara basa makuri a basa shista. Bara basa baka de la basa. Baptize me, Lord, with the spirit of prayer. Not the one I am struggling to pray. The one I'll be struggling to stop. Lord, that's the one you should bring to me. In the name of Jesus. Rika Saba Saba Kondela. Go ahead and pray now. Go ahead and collect a new heart. A heart of praise. The spirit of intercession. The spirit of supplication. Ruba Sanda Laba Kuria Basanda. The spirit of faith. Kandole Basaba Kandasha. Rika Saba Saba Suni Nabakar. Lord Jesus, baptize us with the spirit of intercession. A heart that prays. A heart that loves to pray. A heart that tarries in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, Rika Saba Somak. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are praying with the hymn number 15. Hymn number 15 Give us, O oh Lord, thine unction. Stanza 6 says, with tears and groans and fasting. Oh Lord, help us to pray. Traveling as in bath for souls. Till you revive the church. Now, you have been praying and fasting for many useless things. You have been praying and fasting for things that the Bible says will only be a fringe benefit. Things that will be added to you. But God is initiating us into a kind of prayer life. We are going to sing that hymn. We sing it two times. Then you are going to plead with God. An intercession that is directed at the purpose of God. A spirit of prayer and fasting that makes me to groan in bad for souls. That makes me to see not men as trees a heart that makes me to see human beings that jesus died for a heart that makes me to pray and fast and thirst so that the purpose of god can come in my church in my village in my school we're going to sing that stanza two times and then you are going to go ahead and pray with tears and groans and fasting Oh Lord, help us to pray. Traveling as in bath for souls till you revive the church. With tears and groans, with tears and groans, and fasting. Oh Lord, help us to pray. Oh Lord, traveling us in bar for souls till you revive the church. With tears, with tears, and grows and fasting. And grows and fasting not for a new job not for a new car but for souls go ahead and plead with God now 
give me that kind of heart give me that kind of heart baptize me with that kind of prayer life rebaskondo lo basakadista ribaskanda la basoria bashikista nemosko bakande la basuri bas rebaska basto nemakuri basaba konde baska a prayer life for souls a prayer life to see the purpose of god established a prayer life to see churches turn around a prayer life to see communities revived lord jesus i i request for that today i sign in for that kind of prayer life release it to my heart release it to my life Kandoro basika re bashte, ni makanda la basa bashte, bora katesko bashta, ne bas kuri basa ba konde la bashta, re basa ba kan, ma konde la bashi kesha. Take away my heart from the mundane things. Cause me to see beyond, beyond the terrestrial. Cause my heart to see visions on high, visions of souls, visions of community turned around, visions of churches revived, whole denominations turned to you. Give me such vision. Give me such a body. Give me such a prayer life. In the name of Jesus, ribaskama, bara baskondele basukeshta. Don't miss this hour. God is distributing something. Stretch in and take your own. Mara baskore basab. Ne maskiri basabasta. Ne makana basta. Re baskaba kanda la basta. Ri baskaba konde le basta. Ne maskure ba. Ne makanda la basa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to plead with God for faith. The 12 disciples, we were told that they are not the kind of people that were ready for revival when Jesus committed himself into their hands. I was wondering where James and John found the faith to tell a crippled man to look at them and something happened. Few days ago, just 50 days ago, they were hiding because they didn't want the Jews to see them. But in less than a few months, something happened to their spirit. A spirit of faith came upon them. Will you plead with God now and say, all this dilly-dally, supposing it doesn't happen, supposing I try, supposing I pray, supposing, supposing, they did not suppose, they just spoke. Can you plead with God and say, Lord, baptize me with the spirit of faith. Faith to believe you. Lord, do something to my heart. Take away this heart of unbelief. Faith to believe you. Faith to believe that a whole denomination will be changed. Faith to believe that a whole community can be saved. Faith to see Nigeria turned around. Father, baptize us with faith. Baptize us with faith. Baptize us with faith. Raba kandele basuri abasabash, riba skanda la basuba la basuri, gendo lo basa. Faith and prayer and unity will bring the latter rain.
This is not the one you woke up. This is the one that God gives. Can you play with God and say, Lord, the spirit of faith, the gift of faith, that which makes a man believe beyond himself, that will make a man believe beyond his senses, that will make a man believe beyond the facts on ground. Lord, release it to me tonight. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Reba suri basanda la bakuria. Deba skora basi basheke. Equipment for revival. Nema kuri basabasa. Nema kara basuri baskande la bashte. Meka ndele basuri abasaka de bashte. Rikaska bakonde le basuri bas. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and connect. Go ahead and connect and collect. Nema skobaka. Faith to see revival before I die. Faith to see revival spread across the nations. Lord, give me faith. Give me a heart that believes you. Take away this narrow heart. Take away this hollow heart. Give me a heart that believes. A heart that collects nations. A heart that collects peoples. A heart that stops wickedness and a throws righteousness. Give me faith. Give me faith. Namakonde Ketiska. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.